Hi everybody, Mr. Gerhard here, and we're going to go through uh, three scenarios for the ambiguous case in the law of signs. Um, basically, when you're given two sides at an adjacent angle in the SSA uh, scenario, you're going to have either two triangles, one triangle, or no triangles, and you can figure that out through going through the same process each and every time. So I'm going to run through the three scenarios, and I hope this helps you uh, figure this stuff out. So the first one gives us a possibility where angle A is 35 degrees, side B is 8, and side A is 6. So I've just labeled those here on this triangle. And using the law of sines, I can now figure out angle B. So I'm going to say sine of B over 8 equals sine of 35 over 6. I'm going to multiply both sides by 8, so I get sine of B equals 8 sine 35 over 6. To get B by itself, I do the sine inverse. So B equals the sine inverse of 8 sine 35 over 6. Now when I plug that into my calculator, I get B equals about 50 degrees rounded to the nearest whole number. Okay. Now this is where we need to check to see what happens or what other possibilities exist. And knowing that the sine function gives us the same angles in the first quadrant and the second quadrant, or the same uh, sine inverse gives us the same angles in the first and the second quadrant, I also have to check the supplement to 50 degrees, which is 130 degrees. Because if I say the sine of 50 on my calculator and the sine of 130, I will get the same answer. And so this has a possibility of having two triangles, one and two. Now to double check or see if the possibility continues, I'm going to use what was given to me in terms of saying angle A is 35 degrees. We'll call it A1 and A2, but it's still 35 degrees no matter what. If I had this triangle over here on the left, first triangle, 35 plus 50 is 85, and that means angle C would be 95 degrees. That works. Over here, if I add these two together, 35 plus 130 is 165, and that would mean angle C in this case is 15 degrees. Because I have a triangle here that works, and I have a triangle here that works, I know this one is going to have two triangles. Okay. Now what I could do is I could go through and find the little c in terms of figuring out what the length is of the side opposite angle c. Um, and I could do that using the law of sines again. So let's go ahead and just do that real quickly. If I said sine of 95 over little c equals sine of 35 over 6, I can multiply and, and divide and get 6 sine 95 over sine 35. And when I do that, I get a value of 10.4. That would be my C1, 10.4 down here. I could also do it again and find little C2. And I would do sine of 15 over little c equals sine 35 over 6. When I do that, I get C equals 6 sine 15 over sine 35, and I get little c equals 2.7. And so there would be 2.7. So here's one triangle with my new angles, and then over here would be my other triangle with both angles as well. And that one is an example of where there's two triangles. Now if we go to the next scenario and I draw in what we know, we know this is 45 degrees, we know this side is 5, and we know this side is 3. So I'm going to go ahead and set it up and say sine of b over 5 equals sine of 45 over 3. Cross multiply and I get sine of b equals 5 sine 45 divided by 3. Do the sine inverse and I get b equals the sine inverse of 5 
sine 45 over 3. So there we go. <clears throat> now, when I do this and plug it into my calculator, I'm going to get something that's either going to say undefined or error or something like that. The reason that is, so when I do the sine inverse, this is actually 1.18 or somewhere thereabouts. If I try doing the sine inverse of 1.18, I'm not going to get an answer. And the reason I'm not going to get an answer is because all our sine values occur between negative 1 and 1. We never have a sine value bigger than 1. We never have a sine value less than negative 1. And so this is impossible. And so this right here is an example where no triangles exist. And so that would be scenario number two. Now some of you might be saying, well, Mr. Garrard, you just drew the triangle right here. You're right, but this is not drawn to scale. This is not five and this is not three. And technically, if I were to go ahead and draw this with the right lengths, my angle or my side that was three wouldn't even reach this line because this is a fixed angle. This three would not reach that, and so that would, could swing back and forth, but it's never going to reach this line segment AB. And therefore, there's no triangles in this scenario. Now let's just go to the last scenario. Last scenario has angle A at 50 degrees, side B at 7, and side A at 8. And when I go and I set this up, I say sine of B over 7 equals sine of 50 over 8. Multiply both sides by 7, and I get sine of B equals 7 sine of 50 over 8. To get B by itself, I do the sine inverse of 7 sine 50 over 8. And B is equal to 42 degrees. Now, I also have to check to see the supplement. So B2 supplement is 138, because 138 and 42 is 180. So there's B1 and there's B2. Now, here's where the fun part comes in. A1 is 50 degrees. And if A1 is 50 degrees, that means C1, the angle C in the first triangle, this would be 92. So this would be 88 degrees. That works. If I let A be 50 degrees in, a, in triangle 2, <clears throat> and I do 50 plus 138, that would mean <clears throat> angle C in triangle 2 would be negative 8 degrees. Now we can have negative angles, but we can't have negative angles in triangles. And so this right here would not work, and I would not be able to have that triangle. What I can do, though, is have this triangle and use the information that I have to go ahead and find the sine of 88 over little c equals the sine of 50 over 8. Do my math and say si uh, c equals 8 sine 88 over sine 50. And when I do that on my calculator, I get 10.4. And again, let me just make this all blue now. Whoops. Now I have little c1 being 10.4. And what I've done now is I've created <clears throat> a triangle, in which case there's only one triangle for this um, scenario. So that's how it works. Basically, whenever you're using the sine inverse, we have to also check the supplement. When we check the supplement, we add it to the given angle. If it's less than 180, then we have two triangles. If it's more than 180, we only have one triangle. And if when we do the sine inverse, we get an error, then that means there's no triangles. And that's the ambiguous case for the law of sines.